call to order the Kern Council of Government's Transportation Planning and Policy Committee. And we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Stand. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Justice Roll call. Trujillo. Bob Smith. I am here. Lucinovich. Here. Here. Vasquez. Only after Crump. Here. Just one minute. We we're hearing. I think. John Spencer, somebody's not muted. It's on the phone. Thank you. Gonzalez. For McFarland, Gonzalez. Blades. Present. Prout. Yes. Cryer. Here. Philip Smith? Here. Garcia? Here, present. Couch? Here. Scrivener? Here. Navarro? Here. Alcala? Here. Para? I am here. And Kersey? Here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the council on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the council. Council members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to council at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public comments? Seeing none, I'll move on to the consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kerncog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. Any member of the public wish to pull a consent item? Does any council member wish to pull a consent item? Seeing none, I'll take motion a motion. To approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Bob Smith? Yes. Lucinovich? Aye. Vasquez? Yes. Crump? Yes. Blades? Aye. Prout? Yes. Cryer? Yes. Philip Smith? Yes. Garcia? Aye. Couch? Yes. Scrivener? Aye. Navarro? Yes. Para? Yes. And Kersey? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item number four, 2021 Regional Surface Transportation Program, RSTP. Late applications. Ms. Pacheco, good to see you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. A Kern Clock staff is seeking TPPC direction regarding late submittal of RSTP applications. There were two late applications received after the deadline from Tehachapi and Ridgecrest. To consider applications submitted late would set a precedent, would not be fair to other agencies who submitted on time, and would require the deadline to be extended for all. The KernCog RSTP policy shall direct the programming of available RSTP funding. There are two excerpts to keep in mind. 
The RSDP program is not a grant or formula driven program and Kern Cog shall retain the right to redirect program funding to other agencies so as not to lose funding to the Kern region. Since the Kern Cog RSTP policy does not address late applications, Kern Cog staff needs to defer to the TPPC for action. At the September TAC meeting, the TAC recommended that applications submitted prior to the deadline be accepted and that the deadline not be extended for other applications. The action requested is that the TPPC either, number one, only accept applications submitted by the deadline for consideration this RSTP call for project cycle, or number two, extend the RSTP application deadline for this CMAC, I mean, this RSTP call for project cycle. Thank you. Thank you. We actually have uh, something that people want to discuss, I think. <laughs> We have a member of the public that wants to speak first. Yes, may I? Thank you. Uh, it's this, uh, my name is Jay Schlosser. I'm the Development Services Director for the City of Tatchby. I've been the chairman of the TTAC for four or five years now, so familiar with this issue. One of the two agencies that voted against the, T uh, the TTAC recommendation that you guys have before you tonight. Um, and I've also been um, uh, wait, 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 wait. The recommendation we have we have two options. I'm so I'm not sure which. I'm sorry. The recommendation that the TTAC provided to you, okay. which was that you not extend the deadline and therefore not uh, grant the city's wish or the city of Tatchby's wish that you would uh, extend the deadline and and provide our funds to us uh, for you. RSTP. So, um, and I've been a champion at the TTAC of procedure, of making sure that that agencies, all the agencies here in Kern County, are expected to deliver their projects on time, to deliver accurate ac applications in a timely manner and execute their projects. Um, but uh, tonight my message to you is, is that procedures follow policy. So this board's primary obligation is to provide, in my opinion, and uh, humbly given to you, is that uh, you guys provide policy direction. You tell us how you want us to spend this money as those of us who engage in the delivery of the projects for this region. And that this board, for the entire time that I've been the city engineer for Tatchby, which is 18 years, have made your policy very clear on RSTP which is this is not a competitive fund of money. It is technically, programmatically it is, but that you have, that the, all of the agencies have agreed cooperatively not to fight over this pile of money. In short, each agency takes a small share, um, and so much so that even in this cycle, we did not receive enough applications within the deadline to consume all of the funds that you guys are making a decision about tonight. Um, and so that's a testament to the fact that the agencies don't fight over these funds. That's the policy that you've set forward. Um, the procedure, therefore, if we rigidly apply the procedure and eliminate Tatchby and Ridgecrest's applications, um, we change that policy. We say that minute details, minor errors in the applications are reasons for that money to not be, and that money then goes to another agency. And so it's going to motivate agencies to begin fighting over this money in a manner that, that breaks from the policy that you guys have had in place for a couple of decades. Um, and so my appeal to you is, is that in this case, we would ask for forgiveness from the procedural error that we made. Just for the record, uh, they're due on a Friday. On Monday, I got a phone call going, where was your application? Our application was completely ready. We literally failed to deliver it on the day. And the very next day, it was in the hands of COG staff. I believe Ridgecrest timing was similar to ours being a couple of days late. So our sole error here, otherwise to our knowledge, our application is acceptable to staff. Our sole error here is a couple of days late. Uh, I would note it's not unprecedented. Uh, the previous cycle, Ridgecrest was given, ex because of the recent earthquake, they were given additional time to deliver their RSTP applications in a timely manner. So this is not at all unprecedented for us to make a, an exception to this procedure from time to time when it merits. They're not the only case. I do believe we also, in the cycle prior to that, um, forgave a resolution, a lacking resolution from Arvin and one other agency, if my memory serves me correctly. So from time to time, we have overlooked procedural issues. Um, so if we, uh, uh, so one other point I'd like to, or two other I'd like to quickly make is, we received applications totaling 23.5 million. You, we have 24.1 million dollars in funds available. So the next step, regardless of if you decide against the city's request in this case, the next step will be to go back to the TTAC and figure out who gets the extra money. 
So may I just put my hand up now and ask for the funds now uh, instead of going through that process. I suspect Ridgecrest will also want to put their hand up. Um, so it, it, we're going to go back to a reallocation effort anyway. And so in that case, uh, again, I'm asking for a minor procedural forgiveness. And I'd like to volunteer uh, to make a concession for our procedural error. Uh, the city of Tatchby would volunteer to, if we make a similar late error submission within the next five years, we will voluntarily agree not to pursue our case. So um, in this uh, gesture that I give, we provide a way for the procedure to be upheld so that there's clear clarity that the procedure matters and that it doesn't not matter um, and that the city of Tatchby believes, I, I've been doing this for 18 years, I, uh, just as an anecdotal note, I've never delivered an application late, not one time. Um, so very frustrated that, that we made this simple error and so that's my appeal to you. Uh, let's not start su fighting over this money um, and instead uh, continue with our tradition of, of allowing each agency to have their fair share of the RSTP pot. So thank you for hearing me. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any other members of the public? Okay, I'm, I'm going to actually set the timer this time. <laughs> <laughs> you lucked out. <laughs> 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 I, I'm, I'm, my name is Travis Reed. I'm the Public Works Director for the City of Ridgecrest. I uh, haven't met a lot of you, have met some of you. Um, I, I wish I had the information and the background that Jay has, but I am not. I am new to this council, new to, not to the City of Ridgecrest, but new to the actual city. And I, I debated if I should put something under my eyes to make myself cry in front of you guys. I voted against that. <laughs> but. I actually was not aware of <clears throat> the city's previous request being late. I too uh, have a new staff. I am new myself. We have one person on our staff that remains from last year when the earthquakes were around for these grants. This is my first go at any grant application, any grant process. So I too, I did not know when the um, original call for projects came out and I'm I guess I'm not here making excuses. I'm more here asking for one, a one-time forgiveness. Um, I also made an egregious error on the application after speaking with Jay on the phone this week that we apparently asked for way more money than what we are normally allotted. So we are humbly good with anything the council would grant us. And like I said, uh, I'm willing to make the same concession. If we um, have any other late applications within the next five years, we will gladly not pursue that grant. So I thank you for your time, and I am also open for any questions if the committee has any. Thank you. They didn't use it. <laughs> Anybody else from the public? Any council members wish to speak? Mr. Smith from I've been on here a long time and I'm, I think there's been more than just a couple of times when there's exceptions and I'm not sure we want to start in with a five-year period of keeping track well it was four years and six months that someone did every staff has been under stress over the last few couple of years uh, it's not necessarily an excuse but it, there's going to be times from every one of our communities there's going to be something come up oh shoot Someone was out when they should have hit the button to send or whatever it is. This, this time it's Tatchby and Ridgecrest. Next time it could be Arvin or Maricopa or, you know, Shafter, Wasco. You know, your turn will come. Let's just be reasonable. Now, the fact that if we do get this, it's not going to bump anyone off, off the uh, access to the funds. It just puts us back in the, in, not in the running, but just puts us where we use the funds that are for the region. So that's my, my take on it. You never want to leave money on the table for our region, you know. So uh, it would just put us off for two more years and we'd probably and we'd get it anyway because we, we qualified for it. But this is a clerical thing. Uh, I think, uh, like I say, any one of us could, any one of our cities, this could happen. It could happen to Bakersfield. It could happen to the county, even with large staffs. Uh, uh, so uh, I'd like to see, you know, if it's a reasonable, request because it's late that it come to the board I would suggest that uh, if if there's an error or a mission or whatever and it comes to the board by the time the TTAC has to decide to uh, approve the late 
you know, base it on the merits that, you know, we have the money, no one else is going to lose, no one's going to suffer, and, and, and go from there with reasonable minds. That, so that's where I'm at on that, and I appreciate anybody's consideration. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, just real quick, of course. Mr. Blades from Ridgecrest. That's right. For Ridgecrest and for my public works director. Yeah. Offer the apologies. Uh, it, it was a, a turnover of staff and a, and a case of staff being under a lot of stress, stretched thin, and then even new staff on top of the turnover of our public works director. So those are excuses, and I, I don't mind making them, and we can make them. Uh, we're all, we're all going to end up in that seat, I'm sure, at some point. Um, but I am open to comments or, or any, you know, wh whichever way that goes, and open to offering explanation if one is needed. Okay. I, I will give my opinion for what it's worth. Uh, we are the current council of governments, and we get done what we get done because we work together. And so I personally don't have a problem with uh, moving forward and distributing the money and, and not holding the deadline absolutely to the date. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Scrivener. If you're open to it, I'd, I'd um, like to make a motion. I think in order to accommodate the request from Ridgecrest and Tatchby, we need to go with option two, which is to, to extend the RSTP application deadline um, for this call for the project cycle. Is that correct, Mr. Akimi? Yes. Okay, that's my motion. I'll make a second, Mr. Chair. Uh, just to check if we have any other comments before we take a vote. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can, uh, can uh, Supervisor Scrivener would uh, be a little more specific? Uh, extend the deadline uh, two we two weeks would uh, would have would capture both the Tehachapi and the. Uh, and the uh, Ridgecrest applications, you're not you're not uh, suggesting that we extend it longer than that, are you? Aaron, all I'm going off of is what what I see on my agenda, and it doesn't have a date. And so, if two weeks, uh, in everyone's two opinion, weeks. is is adequate and sufficient to uh, to satisfy z those requests, then I'll amend my motion um, to uh, to include that two week period. Thank you. Any other comments before we vote? Seeing none, uh, let's do a roll call. Bob Smith? Yes. Lucinovich? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Crump? Yes. Blades? Yes. Prout? Yes. Cryer? Yes. Philip Smith? Yes. Garcia? Aye. Couch? Yes. Scrivener? Aye. Navarro? Yes. Para? Yes. Kersey? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item number five, public hearing unmet transit needs in Kern County. Ms. Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Hakimi <laughs> and members of the committee. Prior to making any allocation from the Transportation Development Act funds to uses other than public transportation or pedestrian bikeway facilities, Kern Cog is legally required under California Public Utilities Code Section 99401.5 to determine whether unmet transit needs have been identified within its jurisdiction. Through newspaper advertisements, members of the public were requested to provide their input. Public input was also obtained through public hearings held in the cities, the rural communities of Kern, Golden Empire Transit District, and the city of Delano. Kern Cog Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee reviewed the results of these public hearings. GET serves as the large urbanized area or UZA operator and which serves a population above 200,000. They held their unmet transit needs public hearing on February 16, 2021. The GET board found that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet within its service area. 
the city of Delano serves as a small urbanized area or small UZA operator. And that serves a population above 50,000, but just under 200,000. And they held their unmet transit needs public hearing on March 1st, 2021. City Council of Delano found that there were no unmet transit needs that were reasonable to meet within its service area. Kern Transit held its public hearings on April 27th, 2021. The Kern County Board of Supervisors found that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet. The cities of Arvin, California City, Maricopa, McFarland, Ridgecrest, Shafter, Taft, Tehachapi, and Wasco held unmet transit needs public hearings between February and June of this year. None of the cities reported unmet transit needs that were reasonable to meet. Tonight's the public hearing for fiscal year 2021 to 22's unmet transit needs assessment and determination, at which time Kern Cog should decide through resolution one of the following. One, there are no unmet transit needs. Or two, there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet. Or three, there are unmet transit needs, including those that are reasonable to meet. Mr. Chairman, I'd like you to open the public hearing, please. Thank you. Public hearing is open. Do we have any comments on unmet transit needs? Seeing none. I will close the public hearing. Thank you. At its August 11th, 2021 meeting, the Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee reviewed a countywide analysis of the unmet transit needs provided by Kern Cog staff and the members of the SS TAC determined that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet within Kern County. Thank you. Thank you. Can the action I is, uh, we need a, a roll call vote, sorry. <laughs> No motion, just uh, right, right. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> can, <laughs> can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion second. Roll call vote, please. Bob Smith. Yes. Lucinovich. Yes. Vasquez. Yes. Crump. Yes. Blades. Aye. Prout. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Philip Smith? Yes. Garcia? Aye. Couch? Yes. Scrivener? Aye. Alcala? Aye. Para? Yes. And Kersey? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Caltrans report. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, members of the board. Um, before I get into projects, just want to announce, so the call for projects is out for our Caltrans Sustainable Transportation Planning Grants for fiscal year 22-23. Um, yes, sir. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so the Caltrans call for projects for the Sustainable Transportation Planning Grants for fiscal year 22-23 are now out. There's about $34 million available statewide. The deadline for these applications is October 27th. Um, We'll be holding a virtual workshop on September 22nd. So this has gone out to all your member agencies. So really encourage them to attend the workshop. We're also including a, a, as a guest, the Office of Traffic Safety as they also offer some uh, funding opportunity for, especially for some of our smaller agencies for uh, safety and bike and pet safety and education. So they'll, do, they'll piggyback our presentation as well. So just wanted to share that. Um, also from Clean California, uh, we had our first workshop uh, earlier in the month for the local programs component, which I mentioned about $300 million available statewide for this program. And this, th these funds can be used on, you can partner with on projects on state highways or use them on your own local roads, community spaces, litter cleanup. There's a lot of flexibility with these funds. So we'll be holding workshop number two on October 7th and also make sure we've sent that out to all of our member agencies as well. Um, so getting the project updates, the Bakersfield Freeway Connector, this is modifying the 5899 interchange uh, this contract, this, this project is still scheduled for completion on January 7th of 2022. Work is progressing. The temporary connection at westbound State Route 58 to southbound State Route 99 is currently in operation. Uh, they continue to work on drainage slope and sound wall activity in the area. The southbound Ming Avenue off ramps are currently closed for reconstruction and should be completed by mid-November. The State Route 99 uh, 
fast freight corridor project, I-5 uh, to US-99 over crossing on State Route 99. Uh, they've installed the continuous reinforced concrete pavement. Uh, the final striping is complete. This project is about 98% complete, and we'll be wrapping that project up this month. The State Route 99 rehab project on Palm Avenue over crossing to Beardsley Canal Bridge. Uh, we currently have the uh, lanes closed still and some of the shoulder. We continue to install continuous reinforced concrete pavement in the southbound direction. And ramps continue to be closed at Airport Drive, Rosedale, and California. And this project is scheduled for completion spring of uh, next year. Uh, project is getting ready to start on State Route 99. is another rehab project uh, from old US 99 to White Lane. Uh, the first working day is scheduled for October 15th. The initial work will involve trimming oleanders and grinding work will occur. And there will also be some lane reductions at nighttime from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning. And this project will be in construction until November of next year. The State Route 223 Derby Signal Project um, is to the east end of Arvin. Uh, PG&E has begun their civil work and the relocation of utility vaults. Uh, scheduled to be complete by the end of the month and the contract work is scheduled to start by the end of this month. The Stair Route 184 Sunset Roundabout. This is at the intersection of Stair Route 184 and Sunset near Weed Patch. The project is, is, is ready to advertise. We're still waiting on some PG&E transmission relocation work and we expect to advertise this project in October of this year. The Stair Route 184 or 223 and 184 Roundabout project. Um, this project has been uh, is ready to advertise as well and it will be going out for advertisement here in the fall. The Union Avenue High Intensity Activated Crosswalk. So we're still trying to accelerate that project. Um, we are purchasing the, uh, the, maintenance, the poles of maintenance funds to help accelerate that project. We think we'll have that project ready to advertise, um, be ready to advertise by December. So it could probably go out for advertisement February, March. So we did, we're able to shave probably three or four months off the construction um, and get that thing out early spring of the summer. The Stay Route 204 bike lanes. So our, our maintenance crews did go out and stri stri stripe that edge line back in July that we mentioned uh, between Brenton and California. We are still working on the more holistic projects that we talked about. Uh, we see this as a potential opportunity for Clean California funds uh, from the state from the state side of the house where we can make this more holistic project. We'll be looking at things like artwork, beautification, the green bike lanes and the conflict points. Um, so that project will continue to move forward. And lastly, uh, last two projects, State Route 46. This is the uh, segment 4B with the build funds on it. So we're currently still doing stage one work, which includes the drainage system installation, uh, curb gutter, sidewalk construction, et cetera. And uh, pg &E relocation is complete. And then Southern California gas relocation is in progress. And then we're also working on the various permits associated with it. And last project is the State Route 46. Gap closure project segment four. This is segment four C. This project's in the design design phase. Uh, Sixty percent complete, and um, right away acquisition is underway on this project, and be ready to list and advertise in July of next year. So I, I mentioned the Clean California project. So there's a local grant program, and then we're also looking at some Clean California projects with the state dollars that we have. As I mentioned, we we think the opportunity for the State Route 204 project to make that a more holistic project. It's something we're, we're vetting through right now. We're also looking at some beautification efforts along 99 in the McFarland Delano area. And we're also looking at other various um, opportunities, maybe along Main Streets, for example, like Arvin and things like that, where we could do some beautification efforts through something similar for a Main Street community. We do have resources available, and we're trying to be equitable, make sure we distribute that evenly throughout our five counties. And um, <clears throat> we are making sure that Kern County can get their lion's share of, uh, of, of the resources to go towards that for the beautification. So. More conversations. I know our team has met with City of Bakersfield to have conversations about the 204 and then the beautification efforts around the 178 area. Um, like I said, all the projects are going to include artwork, looking at things like wrapping controller cabinets and things of beautification, et cetera. So uh, more to come on that. And with that, that completes my report. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Appreciate it. And appreciate the work on 204. And I guess the, the question would be, uh, you know, I appreciate you got the stripe lanes in. Uh, any estimate on timing on the, on the more holistic project? Yeah, so the goal was to wrap that up, with, to do that this fiscal year. Um, the good thing about making it a Clean California project is that we're under strict timeline to deliver that. 
uh, hope to get more information. We have to submit our concepts to um, headquarters, I think, by October 15th, so I have a better idea on, on scope and schedule as we, as we develop those further over the next couple of weeks. So hopefully next month I can kind of give you a better estimate on that time frame. But like I said, the Clean California gives the opportunity to do a little more than just the bike lanes and the signage we thought we were doing and the, and the green paint and the conflict points, but actually wrap in some beautification efforts into that as well. Great. Appreciate it. I see the city of Bakersfield's here, so what, whatever help they need, <laughs> Lewis, give it to them. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other comments for Caltrans? Uh, just um, <clears throat> on the workshop um, efforts, I appreciate that. You said the next one's on the 7th. Um, that will uh, also be virtual? Yes, the October 7th is for the Clean California. That'll be a virtual workshop. Um, like I said, I've been sent out to all your member agencies. If you'd like me to send it directly to you, I'm happy to do that as well. And um, then the September 22nd date I referenced was for our Caltrans planning grant workshop which would be for like to reach the fund planning studies, complete street studies, uh, things of that nature. Right. So the ten, uh, so the ten seven is the workshop. When is the date on that? You said is that the ten fifteen date? You said or October seventh is the uh, is the Clean California workshop. Right. When when is that going to be due? Or what are other dates surrounding that? Surrounding that. I'm I'm sorry. I'm not understanding the question. That uh, is there a due date or when? Well, no. There's or that's just a workshop for uh, information on the local program. It's more of an educational workshop. So there's not really a due date attached okay. to that one. It's not coming up against the deadline. No. They'll we'll, um, anticipate call for projects for the local programs will probably occur. Uh, I think in December they're targeting. So this is more information to prepare you for the call for projects in December. So maybe that's what you were referring that is to. Exactly what okay. I was thinking. My Thank apologies. You. Thank you. That'll be all, Chair. Thank you. Any other questions for District 6? Seeing none, District 9. Yes, good evening, Chairman and Council Members. Uh, I'd like to start off by mentioning that District 9 maintenance crews staffed a free Clean California Dump Day event last Saturday um, at the Ridgecrest Park and Ride. So Council Member Blades, glad we were able to coordinate on that and get that going. I hope you've received any positive in, or in, uh, feedback on that from uh, your constituents out there. Uh, we've heard a lot of positive remarks on the uh, dump days that have been going on. So we hope that was successful down there as well for you all. Um, I'd also like to mention and thank uh, Rob Ball and Jay Slosher for commenting on our State Route 58 corridor management plan performance assessment report. Um, all their input mm -hmm. will help feed um, this corridor management plan that we hope to be coming back um, on a more global public scale. We're looking at early um, January, maybe of 22 is what we're looking at for that. Um, and then on the project side, a quick update on the Rosamond Mojave rehab project. Uh, as many of you probably are already aware on State Route 14, we've made the shift and so now uh, all traffic, both northbound and southbound, are on the newly constructed southbound lanes. So therefore, traffic is still limited to one lane in each direction. Um, so now the rehabilitation work on the northbound lanes begins. So that inverses everything we've been uh, doing prior. Southbound on and off ramps uh, for Dawn Road, Bacchus Road, and Silver Queen Road have reopened, whereas now the northbound on and off ramps for Dawn Bacchus and Silver Queen are closed until further notice, and a temporary on-ramp for Silver Queen Road is available. That's all I have this evening. Glad to take any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Board Members. I have a few items on this agenda. Uh, the California Transportation Commission met on August 18th and 19th. Um, several of our agencies had items on that agenda. The CTC is also meeting again in October on the 13th and 14th. You may have read or heard on the radio about the Census Bureau releasing the 2020 Census data that happened on August 12th. They plan to release further detailed uh, tables later this month. However, the California State Data Center was able to create summary tables from the Census data of selected population and household data for all counties, cities, towns, and census designated places in California. This data is not yet available on the census website. However, KernCog staff has extracted, extracted that data for all uh, places in Kern County and posted that data on our website. A copy of that, uh, which I found very interesting, is in your folders tonight. 
over the past month, um, staff has had uh, several meetings, uh, one with Tone Ranch, Supervisor Scribner at attended that with me, continuing to meet on 7th Standard and State Route 43. Also have a meeting, um, also conducted a meeting on State Route 33 safety improvements and have a follow-up meeting scheduled with um, our state legislators, two of them. Also met on um, Truxton on and off ramps, the potential at Truxton in 99. Conducted a State Route 46 monthly status meeting. Also had follow-up meetings on truck climbing lanes on Route 58 and continued to participate in the B3K um, process. Subject to any of your questions, that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Any questions for the director? Seeing none, that ends the TPPC meeting, and I will open the KernCog meeting. Same roll call. And do we have any public comments? Seeing none, uh, we'll move to the consent agenda. Does anybody wish to pull any item off consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll take a motion. Move approval on consent. Second. We'll call vote, please. Bob Smith? Yes. Lucinovich? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Crump? Yes. Blades? Aye. Prout? Yes. Pryor? Yes. Philip Smith? Yes. Garcia? Aye. Couch? Yes. And Scribner? Aye. Thank you. Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman and board members. Um, want to thank the members who have participated, both Supervisor Scribner and Mayor Prout on the uh, our virtual Valley Voice DC um, trip. We've met with uh, several um, members of Congress, um, staff from um, one of our senators, the um, White House, USDOT, uh, and some some of the uh, meetings have been very productive. Uh, that those meetings will continue this week, coming up on September 22nd. Uh, as I have mentioned, I think I have a, a new date for this. Uh, Kern Cog has scheduled a joint meeting with SCAG, that's Southern California Association of Governments. That's the MPO just to the south of us, the largest MPO in the country, for November 15th from 10 a.m. to 2. We'll be, we will be doing that in Santa Clarita. And if you haven't attended those meetings before, some of you have, um, uh, they're a very good way for you to get acquainted with the board members from an another part of, of uh, the state, discuss uh, issues that are relevant to both Kern County and Southern California. Uh, I-5 is one, one of the examples. Route 58 is another. And, and there's uh, other places where we need to collaborate, obviously. If you'd like to attend, please let me or Miss Napier know, and we will have a spot for you. That is November 15th. In your folder this evening is the San Joaquin Valley Regional Early Action Planning Group flyers. There's two of those flyers, two pages of the uh, census data that I mentioned. And I, I thought it was very interesting uh, just to take a look at what the population is, number of households, and it gets down into um, a lot of detail. You know, uh, as an example, there's seven, 677 people living in Dustin Acres. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. There's uh, three uh, flyers on solar workshops, um, electric car workshops, and also training for first responders. Um, as many, as probably all of you know, the responsibilities of first responders, especially when electric vehicles get into car accidents, is significantly different. So, um, a and there's a lot more risk, uh, especially when you have to deal with uh, high voltage electricity. Schedule of cash disbursements for June and the timeline covering September through December. Uh, that concludes my report. We also have a 
a very brief uh, closed session where I'll give you an update, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any member statements? September 24th, we're going to have a um, oil Dorado or a store will be opening up. Uh, the 8th will be the first day, and it uh, goes on about 10 days. And uh, it's our 111th year of having an oil Dorado, and we do it every five years, and uh, it goes way back. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It uh, helps community, uh, push our businesses, uh, keep our doors open and stuff. But it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of activities going on. We have uh, beard, con you know, beard contest, uh, maids of honor, queen uh, contest. Uh, there's so many things going on. Activities going on during the during the week that um, very entertaining. We generally get about maybe uh, in the past about 50,000 participants that come out there to see it, and uh, I can encourage everybody if you have an opportunity, come out there and pay us a visit and see what Taft's like. Great. I know I know uh, Zach will be there. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Any Thank other you. comments? Seeing none, we will adjourn the closed session. So we're back from closed session. Do we have a report? The current Council of Governments has met on item 9A, and there's no reportable action taken. Thank you, and so with that, we will adjourn. <laughs>